Hello fellow YouTubers, it's Sean with Fair Local Plumbing. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to install a 50 gallon electric water heater and a drain pan for that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys some tools you're gonna to need. We have, we have map gas. Um, you can use propane, but map gas is a lot faster. It burns a lot hotter. Uh, we need some kind of torch, obviously to go with that. Uh, the drain line here today for this this application is CPVC, so you'll need fittings, glue, CPVC glue, and also pipe. We'll need copper piping for our TMP line, our relief line that goes up to the water heater. We'll need sand cloth to clean the pipe. We'll need copper cutters or some way to, to cut the copper. We can have, we can have uh, mini cutters. Also, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, you can use a sawzall with a metal blade, but you just make sure that you get all those uh, those rickety burrs off of there with your sand cloth or a, a file. Uh, we have a wire brush for cleaning the inside of fittings. We have an inspection tool to inspect our solder joints, those places that we can't see behind. We have silver bright solder. We have flux, which is this copper made is what I use. Flows very nicely. And we have some kind of Teflon tape or uh, um, Teflon paste that will seal any threading. And then also a crescent wrench or channel locks, something to, to tighten down all the fittings. So with all that, oh, if I want your water heater. This one's a Ream 50 gallon electric water heater. So first thing we're gonna do we're gonna clean up all the fittings. So copper comes with a film on it, kind of a protective layer that keeps it from oxidizing and turning green. What we like to do is just scratch those fittings, make sure that we're getting that, that protective layer off of there where we want that solder and that, that flux to penetrate. Uh, this is a Street 90, so it's Fitting it, the pipe slides inside on this side and it goes, this is actually pipe size. So this side of the, the fitting slides inside of the fitting. Like so, instead of butting together. This here is a male adapter. This is what we're gonna use to actually attach to our TMP line. I'll show you that in a second. We have a three quarter ball valve sweat. Same thing, clean that out. Here we have our water heater flex lines. These are Falcon style, we use these a lot. Um, they're pretty, pretty durable and they're flexible enough to when you, you move them around, they will move around again. Uh, like the copper ones, they, they kink very easy. These are very hard to kink. On this, this one right here, this would be for the cold side. What we want to do is we want to make this like the street. We want to make this to fit inside this ball valve. We're going to put the ball valve on the cold side, the inlet su supply side of the water heater. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the edge here. We're just going to cut a little bit of this off, making sure that we're not sidetracking, coming on the same spot. So now we have that done. This pipe will fit inside of that ball valve. So we can just, it saves, saves a little bit of piece, a little bit of time, looks nicer. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our flux. We're gonna flux all those fittings that we just cleaned and get them prepared. You don't need a lot, you just want to cover it. You're going to do the fittings and also we're going to be doing the pipe as well. All right, so the male adapter, the male adapter is going to go here. 
right here for the relief line. And like I said, this relief line um, is set to a certain temperature or pressure. So when it exceeds that, it'll actually allow the water, the pressure to be released into here to flow out of the building rather than your, your water heater buckling or leaking or even in some cases blowing up. So, so we've wrapped it a few times with Teflon tape, about four times around. Um, I use Monster Teflon tape, it's a little bit thicker. If you're using like a, just a white standard Teflon tape, maybe use uh, eight, piece, eight times around, eight to 10, because it's quite a bit thinner. Tighten this down. We don't need to do the water heater nipples right here with any Teflon tape because the, the flex lines themselves have it, rubber gaskets in them already. So when they have that, it's not necessary because that will seal up against that rubber gasket. It's not necessary. You can if you want a little bit of protection, but like I said, not necessary. All right, so we have that. And here's that street nine I was talking about. So we're immediately, let's turn around. This way, we're immediately gonna head towards the wall. We're gonna come over, down, and then into this, this TMP line that we've already pre-plumbed when the house was being built. Okay, so first thing, you wanna make sure all your water's off of the house. Um, depending on where you are, you can shut off at the, at the street, you can shut off at your house. Um, if you're working um, maybe back east, your meter may be down in the basement. We're gonna take our sand cloth now and just clean any excess dirt or paint, removing any kind of tape or anything that's on there. We want this pipe to be really clean, ready to accept that that parts and solder. So I kind of have an idea already of where I want this to be at, so I'm just gonna cut it down. Right here we have the 7 8 discussion. Uh, it fits over a three-quarter copper pipe. And it's just to make it look nice, make it, to add to the finished product. So now your water's off. Got this one ready. There's another one down there for the drain. We'll take care of that in a little bit. So now we're gonna get to the hot and colds here. And if there's a lot of paint, I'll take the discussion. I'll just kind of scratch that paint. A kind of a hack there. Quick hack to get that paint off there a little easier. So that way when you go and sand it, it comes off a lot easier. Now there's gonna be water in these lines when we cut them. So I like to get a nice bucket. Um, this platform is protected by metal, but at the same time you want to keep it clean and keep it as nice as possible. Take our cutters, small turns. You'll see that it go all the way around that pipe. All you do is just take it, give it a couple little bends there, it snaps right off. It's the cold side. I'm gonna do the hot side. If you have your mini cutters, they will actually go all the way around and just take a little longer. Okay, most of the water is out now. We'll take our discussions again. We'll put them up the top on each line.
And you'll see here that there's still a little bit of water inside of the pipe there. And water and soldering do not mix. If the water's in there, it won't allow that pipe to get hot enough. So what we like to do is try and get all that water out of there. So I just like to take my flux brush, just kind of scoop it out. Come my bucket down there to catch it. All right, so we've got that done. Now we're gonna take our flux. Just kind of go around and paint it. Doesn't, you don't need a ton, just enough to cover the fitting. Oops, have to cover the fitting. Now we're ready to install our flex lines. So this is the one that just goes over the pipe. Here's our ball valve and our flex line on this side. Make sure it's straight, uh, although the pipes are coming out crooked. That was somebody else, no me. So now we are ready to solder. So I'm gonna set this back over here. Maybe move a little bit closer here. We can kind of see what's happening. All right, so I'm gonna grab my torch, my torch, my solder, my inspection tool, and I have my rag to clean it up after. When I solder, when, it, when you solder, real quick, you have the fitting here. You have the fitting, and you have the pipe coming out. You want to heat up this, the fitting itself, and you want to be back deep inside this fitting. You don't want to be here at the edge. If you do that, you may you may get a, a, a bead around there, but it's going to be like what they call a cold bead. It's not going to penetrate very far. This flux is made to pull it all the way back into there. So we want to heat up this spot right here. That way it allows that, that flux to be pulled back. And that solder to be pulled back. Now let's take a look at it. You can see that the flux on this side is already, or the solder on this side is already cold. See how it's kind of got that dull look to it. This side's still a little shiny. And you can see, oh, I've got a wet cloth. If you wipe it down too quickly, it'll smear that around. So what I'm gonna do right now is just wipe this down. And then we're gonna look it up there and see if we have any leaks. Any places on there that look like they have a gap in the copper is a potential leak. Sometimes you can remove these first. I find that it's easier to take them off after they're a little crusty and they want to come off a little easier. All right, so got the camera here. Let's take a look up there. We have our inspection tool. I don't know if you guys can see this on the... We're looking back there to see if we see anything. It might look like a potential leak, pinholes or big gaps. And right there, you can see that right there, right on top, there's a gap. So it's always good to inspect even, I mean, I've got 20, 27 years experience. And even I make mistakes, so it's always good to check that out. Otherwise, I'll be fighting water and 
trying to get it all cleaned up again. It's better to do it now while it's already ready. Another quick look. All right, we're good. So now I'm gonna shut my valve off. That way, in case somebody does actually turn on the water, it won't flood us while we're trying to install it. Okay. A little housekeeping here. Keeping prepared. All right. So now we're gonna actually get the water heater up there. And there's different methods to doing this. You can put it on a dolly, like I have this, this, uh, this camera on right now. Or you can get straps that I can strap around them that have handles on have, oh, you can't see. They have handles on them. You can pick them up, put them on there. Me, I'm old school. Let's get a belt. See this wrap the belt around if you're a lumberjack or a tree climber or whatever. And on. Easy peasy. Not too bad. Um, if you can't do it yourself, always uh, get somebody else to help you out if you're not set up for that. So before we, before we hook this up, let's get our, our drain pan set where we want it to be at. So when we do our drains, they come with these fittings here. It's got a rubber gasket and a nut. We want this to be on the outside, the fitting itself on the outside of the pan. We want to stop the water on the inside from going out. So this drain pan is in case your water heater leaks. You don't want it to leak onto the platform and ruin your drywall and get into the flooring and all that stuff. This will actually go out to a tube that goes to the outside. So we want that to stop before we even get to the outside. So always put the gasket on the inside of the pan and then the nut. Get it signed up. I don't know if you guys can see that that drain is right here. So we're going to point this over to the edge. And we're going to come down and out. You got that kind of set there. Get the water here centered. Take a step back and get it. Take a look straight. Now we'll take our crescent wrench. So you just bend the tube up, bring it back down right to the inlet. Make sure it looks nice and straight. You don't want the kink up here. You want to have too gnarly of an angle. Same thing with the hot. This is where they're nice. They flex around really well. Um, the copper ones we used to use all the time, they really would uh, kink very easily. Or you can hard pipe it in, which takes time and extra fitting is really kind of a waste of time, I think. But that's how we've been doing it for a long time. All right. A little tight up now. There we go. So next thing we're gonna focus on is our TMP, that pressure relief line. So I'll take my setting first. I'll flux it, get it ready, make sure my fittings are flux like I had before. Just put that on there. I'm 
usually have a tape measure if I don't have one. If you ever have a trouble moving fittings, you take a piece of pipe, you do a little extra leverage. So, I don't know where my tape measure went. So, we're gonna eyeball this. So what I'll do is I'll take this, kind of look at where I think it's gonna be at. Cut it a little bit long. So that way, it's better to be long and cut some off and be too short. And have to add to it. So we'll take our sand cloth, clean it, clean it, flux it. We're checking on the pipe also for any kind of lines that go there. Sometimes there'll be a, a line that goes all the way through and it won't let that solder take or uh, seal it up. Put a 90 on there. We'll get it ready. And we'll just kind of eyeball what we think it's gonna be. Cut a little piece of pipe off. Use that to tape measure. Fitting to fitting. Make sure we're lined up here. It's looking nice and straight. And looks like we're just a little bit long. We'll cut this off, and it looks like that this piece also is a little bit long. So we'll get this one across and then cut that one down to fit. I can blame my kids for losing tools, but alas, no kids today. All right, so we're just very, very close. Clean it again. Flux it. back up. So when using a TMP line, they do want they want to make sure that there's gravity that allows that water so it doesn't sit up here in the pipe if it does discharge. So you need to make sure you have probably usually a quarter inch per foot, some kind of gravity up there. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna solder this up. pressure it's going to blow a lot of hot water and you don't want that to hurt anybody. Alright, so 
our final step is to hook up that pan now. Like I said, in this application we're using CPVC. Again, no tape measure. So we're gonna do the quick and dirty. And you know what, I'm missing a fitting also. So I will probably leave that for another video. Well, I thank you. Uh, like and subscribe, comment below. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, let me know. And God bless, thank you.